Hi there everybody, welcome to my tutorial on how to speed up your workflow. Right, so in order to speed up our workflow, we want to either transcode all our footage over to a lossless format straight away, or just create proxy files to those originals. The method I prefer is to transcode all my drone footage over to ProRes right away as I'm on a Mac, and that's the preferred lossless format. My other preferred formats are DNX HQ, and GoPro Cineform if you're working from a PC. There's two reasons why I transcode over to lossless. First, to prevent any further quality degradation to my clips when adding color correction and effects. And also my editing timeline becomes much faster as ProRes plays back so much smoother than the hardware hungry Hevec H.265. Proxy files will take up less space than a lossless transcode but they don't prevent further clip degradation and won't improve the speed of the final output as you still have to decode the original clips. If you're on a really slow Mac or PC, you may find you have to use them anyway on top of the transcoded footage. I've gone into much more detail over on the related blog post on the Man and Drone website, link in the video description. But in a nutshell, if you're on a Mac, I want you to either use Final Cut and Compressor or Premiere and Media Encoder. If you're in a PC, you should be running Adobe Premiere and Media Encoder. DaVinci Resolve is also good, but I won't be covering that in this tutorial. So what I'll do is I'll run through the transcoding process first and then how to create proxy files. Okay, so what I've done, I've created a folder here called Watch Folder 1, and I'm just going to navigate over to Adobe Media Encoder. And you can see we've got a couple of tabs here. We've got Queue and Watch Folders. So where we're going to do our transcoding is via Watch Folders. So make sure that tab is selected. Just going to drag this folder over, and you'll see we have some predetermined settings. So I will change this H.264 by clicking on it and down to our quick time and we'll untick export audio because there's no audio recorded on these raw drone shots and i want to come down to the video codec and we have a couple of options here and the one i'm going to be choosing as i'm on a mac is 42 hq if file size becomes a problem i can suggest you change to 422 they're both 10-bit codecs at the end of the day so they will produce good results if you do a lot more editing, then you know with effects, then HQ will retain a little bit more finer detail in the end result. So I'm going to set that at 422HQ. And I want everything based on source. So Ultra HD is what I recorded. So it will match that. Quality 100, fine. Frame rate, fine. Field order, it's fine. We don't need to do anything there. Square pixels should be at one to retain the same as aspect. Render at maximum depth, we don't need to check this. The, file, the output will be 10 bit anyway. So only select this on your final output once you've done a, your full edit in Premiere um, and you want to retain the best possible quality. Uh, for these particular transcodes, we, we don't need to do anything because we've done nothing to them. So it's still going to be 10 bit, so we'll leave that as is. Just check the other thing, everything's fine. None of this is, we need to change. Use maximum render quality. We haven't downscaled or upscaled footage, so it's going to be exactly the same as shot from the drone. So we can leave that unticked. And I'm happy with that, so I'll click OK. And then the next thing we want to do, we want to locate our clips. So we can open this again and then navigate to our media. So I've got four clips here from my drone, the Mavic 2 Pro, and they're shot in a shot 265 So simply, once we selected our clips, we just drag them over to the watch folder, and it will automatically start queuing them up within Media Encoder. And you can see there, it's already added the first one and it's wearing away. The others will add in due course, as you can see. 
and it'll encode them one by one. So as you can see, everything's rendered out and is complete. So I'll just minimize that and navigate to the watch folder and just show you what it's created. So there's two folders, source and our output. So our original source files have been moved to here. So you can move them around as necessary back to their original locations. And our outputted ProRes 42HQ files are here. As you can see, a file size has increased for those. So these are the ones we want to be using for our edit. So you can, again, move them around as necessary into your folders for organization and purposes. Now let's move back to Media Encoder. Now I want to show you, let's go back to the watch folder. I want to show you if you're on a PC and you wanted to use something else other than Apple ProRes. So you would come down to the video codec as you would looking for the Apple ProRes. This time we want to be looking for GoPro Cineform. So we select that, Just check that export audio is unticked, same as before. And we're basically matching the source. So Ultra HD, and we'll improve the quality up to five for these renders. 29.97, yep, lower first. Square pixels, one, yep, that's fine. Render at maximum depth, we don't really need to because we haven't done any further edits. So we don't need to pad out with unnecessary data. YUV 10 bit per channel. Yeah, fine. And use maximum render quality again. We have an upscale or downscale from anything, so we don't need to tick that. Happy with these settings. So once you're happy with that, you would click OK and then you'd render out those clips again as you did for the ProRes. So we'll go back in again and I'll show you the other one, the DNX HQ. So back to the video codec and down to DNX HR and HD. And we have an 8-bit one here by default. So I wanna scroll up, find the 10-bit one and HQX is the one we want. We don't want the triple four because we're not pushing it that, that far. I mean, if this space isn't an issue for you, then yeah, by all means use the 444, but really HQX is gonna be more than enough for our Mavic 2 Pro footage. So that's fine, no alpha, and square pixels again, one, depth ticked off, maximum render ticked off. This will be fine, and we're happy with that, we'll click okay, and then again, you would render that out as you would for the others. Okay, so the other way we can transcode for on the Mac is via compressor. So I have my project media here, which is my Mavic 2 Pro footage, and the container I'm using is .mov, so make sure that is selected on the DJI Go app before you do any recording. Otherwise, compressor will have trouble reading the MP4 app. So let's go to compressor. And the way I'm gonna load these is simply by highlighting and dragging them across. And we'll maximize that. And as you can see on the left in the settings, I already have my Apple ProRes menu pulled down. And the one I'll be using is 42HQ. So with the clips highlighted, we simply put our preset over and it will apply a 422 to all the clips. Now, we want to make sure that we are actually encoding video only because there's no audio on these. So we'll have to go through the clips and just make sure that option is selected. And once we're happy with those, we will simply click Start Batch at the bottom. So we'll run those and then it'll go through the clips one by one, much like it did in Adobe Media Encoder. Okay, so those video files rendered out and what I'll do is I'll navigate to the folder Again, as we can see, here they are, 
with the new file size so we can move these about as necessary for our final projects. Okay, so we're in Premiere and I've created a new project file. And the first thing we wanna do before we import any media, go up to File, Project Settings, Ingest Settings, and then we'll tick Ingest. We'll change our copy to Create Proxies. And by default, we'll have the lowest resolution one here. So I've got an Apple ProRes 422, uh, 1024 by 540. So this will play back fairly smoothly in the timeline. So I'm happy to stick with that one. And the GoPro Cineform below that one, if you're on a PC, would be a good alternative. So I'll leave it at that. And the proxy destination, you can also change. You can also change to uh, specific folders or any storage location different to where the project files are. For this instance, I'm just gonna leave it the same as project. So happy with that. Now we can import our media. So just the same clips as before. Just drag them into import media. And then we'll see that media encoder should be starting to render those out. So one by one, I'll add these ingests. And any files you add going forward, any video files, to the project, you will see the same thing. It will encode them, transcode them into proxies straight away. So let's just go back to our media encoder and we'll see what's going on. And it's whirring through those. So we'll just leave that going and we'll come back to those once they're complete. Okay, so those are now rendered out. Actually took quite a while, but that's H.265 for you. Let's jump back to Premiere. And what we wanna do is just initiate a timeline. And then I can show you what's going on with the proxies. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a uh, proxy toggle button. So if we come over to this little tab here, and then we've got toggle proxies, which is this icon here, we can just drag it to our menu so we can toggle through normal resolution and our proxies so yeah we can see with the proxy enabled scrubbing through there is quite smooth and that'll be for all the clips and then proxy off we can see we've got drop frames already we haven't even done anything to the clip we haven't had any LUTs or anything like that yet so let me just Cut that out, I'll just add another one. Another clip. Just to show you. There, it's quite smooth. And then back to our full resolution. You may find that, depending on the speed of your computer, you may even have to come down to something like a quarter resolution. Just so you get the, the full smoothness. But you'll see, I mean, I can do full resolution here with the proxies and still no problem at all. When it comes to coloring, let's jump over to the Lumetri color system. So when it comes to the coloring, uh, ideally I would want you to work with full resolution. We're only using one frame, so we don't need to really scrub through. So we'll toggle back to our full resolution when we're dealing with color correction. And then we can just We'll add our lap, just take the intensity down a little bit. And then we can toggle through this way. And obviously if we're doing, and it's always worth working in full resolution for the coloring, just so you know what the, the end result is likely to look like. So that should speed up things drastically for you within Premiere. Otherwise you'll find that working with H.265 and full resolution is rather tiresome. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut 
And the first thing we want to do is to go up to File and then down to Import and across to Media. So we'll select my Mavic 2 Pro footage here, just these three clips. I will highlight them and I'll create a new event in the library and I'll just call it Proxy Demo. And then I'll check the other settings here. And the important one is transcoding and we'll have create proxy media ticked for this and then we'll import selected at the bottom there so what it's going to be doing is it will show the original clips here and in the background it will be working on transcoding the proxy so we can see the progress here and already you can see it is a lot faster than Adobe Media Encoder, purely because it's optimized for Mac. So we can leave that open just to set the progress. Uh, in the meantime, we can drag a clip over and we'll come back to this when it's complete. Okay, so those have rendered out now and I'll just show you the difference here. So we're on the optimized view and you can see when I scrub through it's quite slow and clumbersome and we'll go back up to view and then switch between our proxies and you can see it's nice and smooth there so this is going to be perfect for our editing and then we can make our adjustments on top of those and hopefully uh, the project will be a lot smoother than working with full resolution H.265. This concludes the Man and Drone tutorial on how to speed up your editing workflow. Don't forget to check out the in-depth related blog post over on the Man and Drone website. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.